Hello, beautiful friends and bookish fam. My name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Ruskies and Reads. Today we are here to select my May TBR. Lord help me. So if you watched my April TBR, you know that I currently have a lot going on in my reading life. So not only do I play my TBR game every month and that helps select at least a few books for me to read, but I also have a lot of reading challenges and personal reading challenges that I'm trying to satisfy. And so every month I draw at least three from a little mug and I have to read whatever prompt or book I select from that mug. And of course, I'm also participating in my own Buffy themed readathon Slayer Fest, which is running from April 1st through the end of June. If you are participating in the quarter long option, which I am, I'm trying to satisfy by every single prompt with doubling up as little as humanly possible and it is rough going y'all it is definitely a challenge but I actually decided to make things even harder on myself because I have decided to participate in the magical readathon if you are not familiar the magical readathon is hosted by G from book rose it is probably one of the most detailed and intricate imaginative readathons that is out there there's a lot of thought and effort that goes into this readathon and all of the graphics and stuff that G creates for it so I will be sure to leave her channel link down below for you to go ahead and check it out if you are interested. But this is actually something that has been going on for many, many years. Back in the day, it was more Harry Potter themed. So you had to do like your OWLs and then your NEWTs and things like that. But now she has completely changed it and made her own unique magical readathon. But it still happens twice a year in the spring and the autumn. And basically the overall goal of this readathon is to become an expert in your chosen career field. And then you gradually grow in the career that you have selected. I won't try to go too much into detail about this readathon because like I said, it is very intricate and complex. But the last few rounds of this readathon has been the Aurelium Magical Readathon. Aurelium is a magical school and when she first introduced this version of the Magical Readathon you had to do several beginning things to kind of build your character, gear up, so get your conduit, select your guild, and do all of that good stuff. Even though it's not necessary to do that in order to like jump right into the recent iteration of the readathon, the Spring Equinox which happened from April 1st through April 30th, I decided that I wanted to go ahead and do that and so I spent a lot of April trying to build up my character and do all of the like the little beginning things that you were supposed to do prior to the first spring equinox at Aurelium Academy. And so I'm going to be using May to actually participate in the challenges that were for this year's spring equinox. So there's definitely a lot going on in my reading life, a lot of challenges that I'm trying to satisfy. And that's going to mean that this May TBR is likely going to be very, very complicated. So as usual, before we jump into the gameplay for this round, I'm going to go ahead and recap how I did in April. I'm also going to draw the challenges and then I'm going to briefly talk about what my plans are for the magical readathon prompt wise and book wise. So the first challenge that I pulled for myself in April was to read The Silent Sister by Diane Chamberlain and I did read that in April and I really really enjoyed that. I gave it a four stars. It was such a solid mystery thriller suspense type novel and I really liked it. The second challenge that I pulled was to read When Breath Becomes Air by Paul Kalanithi. This is a nonfiction memoir written by Paul himself. He was a neurosurgeon who was diagnosed with basically what ended up being terminal cancer and he decided to document his thoughts and feelings on the process and his life and things like that. Memoirs are not really my thing especially Especially when I'm not personally invested in the person who is telling the memoir but I can understand the value and the beauty in the story that he told especially as he is dying of cancer and using his final weeks and months of life to just create this really beautiful stunning story that really makes you examine life it's very you know existential in that way I ultimately gave this a three stars but I'm not mad that I read it like I said it was a beautiful touching very short memoir and then the third and final challenge that I pulled for myself was to read King of Crows by Libba Bray and I have read and satisfied that meaning I have now completed the Diviners series so so all three of those challenges were satisfied. Moving on into the prompts I got from gameplay back in April. The first prompt I landed on was to read a beautiful book. And for that, I selected Kingdom of the Cursed by Carrie Maniscalco. This is the third book in her Kingdom of the Wicked trilogy. And I picked it because it is the stunning fairy loot edition. It is just flipping gorgeous. I am actually currently reading this one right now. If I don't finish it today, I will absolutely be finishing this tomorrow. Then I landed on the prompt to read a book club pick. And this worked out really well because I needed to already go ahead and read Bells for Forgetting by Adrienne Young, which is part of a book club I'm now a moderator for on Goodreads. It is called the Bookworm Bitches Book Club on Goodreads. If you are interested in joining, I was recently made a moderator in that group because one of the moderators is stepping down and so now I'm even more fully involved in it than I was before. This is an adult debut by Adrienne Young. It is a magical realism story that is very witchy atmospheric vibes and I really enjoyed this one. And then the final prompt I landed on for my TBR game that actually made me pick a book was to read a book with green on the cover and for that I selected The Writing Retreat by Julia Bartz. I have not yet gotten to this one in April 
and I have decided not to get to this one in April because I have determined that I can actually fit it into my Slayer Fest readathon. It wasn't originally part of my Slayer Fest TBR, but based on what I've heard, this contains a lot of morally gray characters, and I think I can use this to satisfy the prompt of Maggie. But also, and I didn't realize this, but this book does not have high reviews. This book has a 3.5 rating on Goodreads, which is the same rating as The Cloisters. And The Cloisters was what I was going to read for a book with Unhaul Potential and Riley to read the lowest rated book on my TBR. I think I might still read The Cloisters as a book for Unhaul Potential, but I can also use this to satisfy to read one of the lowest rated books on my TBR. So I have to wait until Maggie Walsh, which is the morally gray prompt, comes up because she is a big bad and I have to read those in order. And so this will definitely be getting read in May because Maggie is going to be popping up for me in May. But I didn't get to this one in April. And so I guess I'm taking a punishment and rolling it over into May, but I was already going to do that anyway. So it worked out. All right, now let's go ahead and pull the challenges from my little cute fox challenge mug here. I swear this mug gets fuller and fuller every single time I come on here to do this. If you're not familiar, I have a lot of reading challenges that I'm trying to satisfy. Some are personal reading challenges that I've set for myself, like the 23 books I want to read in 2023. There are also more formal reading challenges that I'm trying to satisfy that are like open to everybody, like the 52 book club reading challenge. I have also since added all of the sequels that I need to read in order to complete series. And if you watch the video that I posted during Bookmas about all of the series that I'm currently in the progress of completing, you'll know that that's a lot. But we're going to see what we can do. I think I'm going to go ahead and pull three from this mug and pray that I can fit them in with what I'm already doing for this month. Okay, I'm going to mix them up really good because all of the sequels are on the top. Let me grab this first one here. Uh -oh, I grabbed two. Hold on. Okay, no, I got one. All right. Ooh, Pull of the Stars by Emma Donahue. Okay, so that actually works out really, really well because this is definitely a challenge prompt that I need to satisfy. It's one that I'm a little bit nervous about because I've never been interested in this author and I'm not even particularly interested in this book, but I had to read a book that was set in Dublin, Ireland. And this is like one of the only ones that I could find that I was actually interested enough to read. All right, on to challenge number two. This is a baby one. Can't even hold on to it with two hands. Okay, Burying Water. This is a series that I'm in the middle of by K.A. Tucker. It is four books, I believe. I've already read the first two and reading the third one will not only get me closer to finishing the series, but it will also help me to satisfy a reading challenge prompt. Okay, so again, I need to read the third book, which is called Chasing River. And all of the books are like loosely connected to each other. You don't have to read one before the other. So this says, armed with two years worth of savings and the need to experience life outside the bubble of her Oregon small town, 25-year-old Amber Wells is prepared for anything except dying in Dublin. Wait a minute. This one is set in Dublin? Holy cow, y'all. This one is set in Dublin. That means I don't actually have to read The Pull of the Stars to satisfy that prompt of a book set in Dublin. I can read this, which is already on my TBR, because I need it to continue a series. Whoa, okay, that worked out really well. So please disregard The Pull of the Stars. We're gonna read this one instead. All right, lem let me continue. 25-year-old Amber Wells is prepared for anything except dying in Dublin. Had it not been for the bravery of a stranger, she might have, but he takes off before she has the chance to offer her gratitude. 24-year-old River Delaney is rattled. No one was supposed to get hurt, but then that American American tourist showed up. He couldn't let her die, but he also couldn't risk being identified at the scene, so he ran back to his everyday life of running his family's pub. Only everyday life is getting more and more complicated thanks to his brother, Angus, and his criminal associations. When the American girl tracks River down, he quickly realizes how much he likes her, how wrong she is for him, and how dangerous it is to have her around. Chasing her off would be the smart move. Maybe it's because he saved her life, or maybe it's because he's completely different from everything she's left behind, but Amber finds herself chasing after River Delaney. Amber isn't the kind of girl to chase after anyone, and River isn't the kind of guy she'd want to catch. All right, y'all, what a fortune twist of fate that this is set in Dublin and I already needed to read it anyway. So that works out perfectly. Okay. So because of that, I'm actually going to pull two additional challenges because one of them I don't need anymore. And eventually we'll get into the gameplay. We'll get there. All right. Alex Finley. Okay, so he's on the list of authors that I want to try and read. For this one, I'm going to be reading Every Last Fear. This is also going to work well for a prompt for the Buzzword Readathon that's happening throughout the year. I have never read Alex Finley before. I have heard amazing things about him, and that's why he has been on my radar, and I want to know for sure whether or not I want him to stay on my radar. They found the bodies on a Tuesday. So begins this twisty and breathtaking novel that traces the fate of the Pine family, a thriller that will both leave you on the edge of your seat and move you to tears. After a late night of partying, NYU student Matt Pine returns to his dorm room to devastating news. 
news. Nearly his entire family, his mom, his dad, his little brother and sister, have been found dead from an apparent gas leak while vacationing in Mexico. The local police claim it was an accident, but the FBI and State Department seem far less certain, and they won't tell Matt why. The tragedy makes headlines everywhere, because this isn't the first time the Pine family has been thrust into the media spotlight. Matt's older brother, Danny, currently serving a life sentence for the murder of his teenage girlfriend, Charlotte, was the subject of a viral true crime documentary suggesting that Danny was wrongfully convicted. Though the country has rallied behind Danny, Matt holds a secret about his brother that he's never told anyone. The night Charlotte was killed, Matt saw something that makes him believe his brother is guilty of the crime. When Matt returns to his small hometown to bury his parents and siblings, he's faced with a hostile community that was villainized by the documentary, a frenzied media and memories he'd hoped to leave behind forever. Now, as the deaths in Mexico appear increasingly suspicious, Matt must unearth the full truth about his family's final days, putting his own life in peril. This sounds absolutely fantastic. There are multiple layers going on here. So you have a devastating tragedy in the present as a young college student loses his entire family. Then you're also dealing with the crimes of his older brother as he was suspected of killing his girlfriend. Holy cow. And there's like a podcast element to it probably. Oh, I am so down for this. Even though this doesn't necessarily currently fit into what I have going on, I'm so hyped to read this one. All right. So these challenges have been working out really well so far. It's oddly hard to grab one of these. Okay. 10 Tiny Breaths. All right, so that's actually another K.A. Tucker series that I'm in the middle of. It's another quartet. I believe there's only four books in there. So we'll go ahead and continue with that. It looks like it's gonna be the month of K.A. Tucker. All right, and really quickly, I just also wanna go through the magical readathon prompts that I have to satisfy for the spring equinox. I'm trying to be a beast master and I have five prompts that I have to satisfy. I have actually started working on this in April. Again, I was doing a lot of the beginning things like working on my characters and things like that. But when I could, I was also doing some of the prompts that I needed for my career. So the first prompt I have to satisfy is elemental studies and that is to read a book with flowers on the cover and for that I am going ahead and reading kingdom of the cursed as you can see there are flowers on here so I should be able to satisfy this before May knocking out that one prompt then the next prompt is animal studies and for that I had to flip a coin and if I got heads I had to read a nonfiction and if I got tails I had to read a fiction I ended up flipping heads and I had to select a nonfiction so for that I actually chose hyperbole and a half by Ali Brosh so I chose this for a couple of reasons one this is going to satisfy another reading challenge another reason why I chose this is because even even though this is like 360 pages it's basically written in like comic book format like if I show you on the back that's kind of how it's written throughout the entirety of the book so it goes very very fast and I wanted to select this because I'm doing a side quest for the magical readathon and the next prompt that I have to satisfy before I can move on to the next is that I have to read a book with the alchemy ASMR room that she created in the background and since it's very hard for me typically to sit down and read a book I need something that's going to be easy for me to fly through and this is it so I will probably be able to complete this in a handful of other sittings and it works out really well. So we're going to go ahead and do this one. And then for alchemy, I have to read a book with a medal in the name. And for that, I'm actually going to choose Stay Awake by Megan Golden. So it's not in the name of the title, but it's in the name of the author. I wanted to go ahead and read this because this was a book that was sent to me in April as part of the monthly Facebook gifting group that I'm a part of. And I try to read those as they come into me. This will also satisfy at least one Slayer Fest prompt, probably of like Faith to read a darker taboo book or something like that. This is a thriller suspense novel. I don't really want to know too terribly much about it. I just kind of want to go into it blind. I have read two other Megan Golden books that I have really enjoyed and I'm expecting to really enjoy this one as well. Then for the prompt of restoration, I have to close my eyes, shuffle and point to select my read, but I'm actually just going to use one of these challenge prompts that I just pulled to satisfy this since I was shuffling those challenges and I was pulling blind and I had no idea what I was going to select. So I could technically choose either one of the K.A. Tucker books or Every Last Fear by Alex Finley to satisfy this prompt. And then the final prompt is lore and that is to read a book with a map and I am currently in the middle of Way of Kings and so that will be satisfied eventually probably probably within the next month or so. So that will definitely count towards that. And then lastly, just two more things to talk about. As part of that Bookworm Bitches book club on Goodreads for May, the book of the month is going to be The School for Good Mothers by Jessamine Chan. So I definitely do have to satisfy that one. But luckily, I'm able to fit it into Slayer Fest for the prompt of Joyce to read a book featuring a strong mother character. And then in addition to the Spring Equinox challenges and the side quest that I'm doing, I'm also participating in the year-long challenge that is being hosted by G for the Magical Readathon. It's called Adventure in Aurelia or something like that. I can't remember the exact name, but basically every single month there is a new prompt to satisfy. And the prompt for May is just to read a book that ends on an even page number. And as of right now, I don't know what books I'm reading will end on an even page number. So I could feasibly choose any one of these as well. So we're going to leave this open and go from there. All right, y'all, that took way longer than I thought. I've been filming this for 33 minutes and we haven't even gotten to the gameplay. So let's get into the gameplay. All right, everyone, it is time for the next round of the My Bad TBR game. We are beginning exactly where we left off after the last round. So we are going to do our standard six draws and see what that gets us starting with draw number one.
All right, we drew a six and a yellow. I currently only have one yellow pawn out on the board that I can actually move. So we'll go ahead and flip the board really quick and see what he lands on. One, two, three, four, five, six. TBR veteran. So that means a book that has been on my TBR for quite a while. All right, so my first draw was a number six and yellow and that landed me on the prompt to read a TBR veteran. For this, I'm going to be reading The Raven King by Maggie Stiebotter. This is the fourth and final book in the Raven Boy series. And this is just another one that I need to finish and complete and get out of the way. I started the Raven Boy series several years ago. I was already way late to the game on this one and I remember really enjoying it and I think I enjoyed the second book too. Then the third book was just a little bit above my head. It was a little bit weird for me, a little bit more abstract than I like. I have a hard time with like magical realism stories and that's really what The Raven Boys is and since it's been a couple years since I read that last book I have definitely lost a lot of momentum on this series and I need to go ahead and finish it. But also I do have The Raven King down to satisfy a Slayer Fest prompt for the trio to read a book with a found family or strong friendship group and this has that. And this has definitely been on my TBR for a very long time. It's not the longest book that has been on my TBR, but I started The Raven Boys, I think it was in 2017 or 2018. And so this naturally kind of went on the TBR as a result of me starting the series. So this has definitely been on there for several years and we're going to get it done. Draw number two. All right, once again, I only have one valid pawn that I can move. Now with a 10, I could either move backwards one or forwards 10, depending on what I'm feeling and what the prompt is. So let's go ahead and flip the board and see what I wanna do. All right, so if I move backwards one, that lands me on favorite author. And if I move 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, that is true crime. Okay, so as much as I love true crime, I don't actually have any currently on the docket for Slayer Fest. And I think I would be more easily able to fit in favorite author. So even though it doesn't really get me further around the board, I think I am going to go ahead and move backwards one to favorite author. Then I drew the number 10 and moved the color blue and that landed me on the prompt to read a book by one of my favorite authors. This also will work out really well for Slayer Fest because for the prompt of Xander, Xander allows me to either reread a favorite book or to read from one of my favorite go-to authors and Kristen Hanna is definitely one of those. And so I already had plans to read Fly Away by Kristen Hanna to satisfy the Xander prompt. This is the second book in kind of the Firefly Lane duology. It's an unnecessary sequel to Firefly Lane. I'm not entirely sure the motivation behind creating Fly Away but even though it might not be a necessary book, I do think it's going to be a beautiful and touching book, especially if you have read Firefly Lane and you know how it ends. Firefly Lane is ultimately a book of friendship. It follows Tully and Kate over 30 years as they meet in their teens in the 70s, and that progresses into the early aughts as they are in their 40s, and things are going down, conflict is happening, they're both struggling in their own ways, and then they are struggling with each other in certain ways as well, and then, you know, like I said, if you've read it, you know that the ending is not necessarily a happy ending, and so I think you're going to be able to follow these characters after the events of that first book, and it's going to be very touching and probably very, very heartbreaking. And so I wanted to go ahead and read Fly Away because obviously it will finish the duology. It's Kristen Hanna. I love Kristen Hanna. And I just kind of want to follow some of these characters after the aftermath and see what's going on. So we're going to pick Fly Away by Kristen Hanna for this one. Draw number three. All right, we got an ace. So this is actually really lucky because no matter which color I draw, all of them have a pawn in start, which means they all need to get on the board. And so with an ace, I can either move a pawn from start or move forward one. And since I have still a bunch of pawns in start, I would go ahead and take the opportunity to move one from start. And as always, because out in front of start is a free space, I do not have to pick a book to satisfy anything on the board at that point. All right, perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and move one of my red pawns out onto the free space. All right, then I drew an ace and the color red. I just moved a pawn from start onto the free space out front and no book will be selected for this one. Draw number four. All right, so we got an eight and yellow again. Once again, I still only have one eligible pawn on the board and luckily the board is facing the right way. So let's go ahead and move the yellow guy forward eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
8, Foreign Country. So I have to read a book that is set in a foreign country. Since I drew an 8, I do also have the opportunity to swap this prompt with another prompt, but I don't get to choose what prompt I swap it for. So I'm going to have to make a decision on whether or not I actually have any book set in a foreign country that I can read for May. And if not, I may have to go ahead and randomly select another prompt and hope that I can use it. And then I drew an 8 and a yellow, and that landed me on the prompt to read a book set in a foreign country. And right up until I drew those challenges for myself, I was thinking that I was going to need to select another prompt, but luckily the K.A. Tucker book set in Dublin will absolutely satisfy this prompt. So we're good with that. We're going to go with it. All right, draw number five. Yellow is getting a lot of action this round. So again, a 10, I can move backwards one or forwards 10. So if I move backwards one here, that means I have to read a book with multiple timelines. And if I go forward 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, that is published or set between 2000 and 2019. And I think I can easily find a book to satisfy that. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this guy forward 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. And then I drew another number 10 and yellow. This time I landed on the prompt to read a book that was published or set in 2000 to 2019. And this could again literally be anything. So I'm not going to add a new book onto my TBR. I think I'm going to go ahead and use Stay Awake by Megan Golden to satisfy this as well. But if it doesn't work out or something else happens, I definitely have a lot of other books to choose from to satisfy this prompt. All right, so we got five in red. So if I move this guy forward, one, two, three, four, five, overhyped book, and five over there, one, two, three, four, five is spring. So a book that gives me spring vibes. Hmm, let me have a think on this one. Okay, so I think I've made the decision to go ahead and do an overhyped book, and that's because thinking about it off the top of my head, I do have an upcoming book for Slayer Fest that gets a lot of hype. It's one of the reasons why it's even on my radar at all, and so I think I'm gonna go with that. So one, two, three, four, five. Five. Overhyped book. And then the final draw was a number five in red, and that landed me on the prompt to read an overhyped book. And for this, I'm actually going to be reading The Martian by Andy Weir. This book satisfies so many challenges. Andy Weir is an author that I wanted to read in 2023. This is also going to satisfy several other reading challenges that I'm currently working on, and this will absolutely satisfy a Slayer Fest prompt as well. And this is definitely an overhyped book. I'm not saying that this book doesn't deserve that hype. I'm just saying that literally everything I hear about it is phenomenal. Nobody has anything bad to say about this book. It has been making the rounds now for several years since it first debuted. And so it is definitely getting a lot, a lot of hype. And we're going to see if I agree with that height. From what I understand, this follows an astronaut who is basically left on Mars and it's about his survival on Mars as he tries to get back in contact with Earth and he tries to like keep himself alive until he could possibly be rescued. And from what I understand, this also contains a lot of humor. Um, I mean, just based off of the first line, I think that it's evident this book definitely contains a lot of humor. The first line is literally, I'm pretty much fucked and I can get behind a book that starts like that. So we are going to use this. All right, y'all, that is it. That is my super crazy, chaotic, complicated TBR for the month of May. It is ambitious. I realize that. I typically don't read more than 11 books in a month and I think I have 15 books on here. I haven't even talked to you about some of the other Slayer Fest books that I need to read for May because I'm just reading those as they come up as I need to read them. And also I made a completely separate video about all of the books that I'm going to try to read for the Slayer Fest TBR. That TBR has definitely changed as other books come my way that I need to read. And so I've been fitting them in where possible, but this is definitely ambitious. Really the only way that I'm gonna be able to do this is if I read one book every two days. And I don't know if that's gonna be able to happen. We're gonna see what I can do. I'm just gonna plug along. Pray for me. Please comment down below and let me know if you have read any of the books on my TBR and what your thoughts are. I would love to know. Please also comment and let me know how Slayer Fest is going for you or some of the books that are on your TBR. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I post two videos a week, sometimes three, if I have my shit together and a third video to film. And I would sure love to see you in one of those next videos. Bye guys. Thank you.